So I want to welcome everyone to meet the new EVAR codes and introduce Shay will be our presenter for today and Shay has an incredible amount of experience working on the professional fee side of coding, auditing, education and compliance serving coders and physicians alike. She earned a bachelor's degree in health information management as well as her master's degree in health services administration from the University of Kansas. Shay and her husband and her daughter Juniper Marie, now called the Wide Open Spaces of Central Kansas Home. So Shay, we want to welcome you and let you kick us off today's webinar. Great. Thank you so much, Kathy. I'm super excited to be here to talk about these new codes we have for 2018. So these are the codes that were traditionally thought of abdominal aortic aneurysm repair or EVAR. So probably performed in your VAR suite. So today we are really going to dive into these this new set of codes. Um, it really started out even with the change to our code subsection in your CPT book. So it's now known as endovascular repair of abdominal aorta and or iliac arteries. So if you're looking at that, you'll see a new code subsection for these codes. So we're going to go over those new codes, the additions, deletions, revisions, some of the parenthetical notes and coding instructions that we have. We'll take a look at the anatomy, the devices used, and then we're even going to do a coding case in this webinar. So here's the stats. So there, this is actually probably one of the biggest changes in the CPT book this year, if not the biggest change. So you can see we have 11 deleted EVAR and three deleted iliac endograft codes. Um, we used to have a separate subsection for the iliac endograft codes, but as you can tell by the renaming of that section, they are within the same subject section now. There's five revised code, there's 16 new codes, and then 12 add-on codes in CPT 2018. So these changes, they were all um, considered and changed by the AMA ROC committee. So that's that relative value unit update committee that looks at everything that's billed and how it was billed together. So they reviewed these services and thought that some of this stuff um, what we were billing previously should maybe all be included in one code. So we're going to see in these code descriptions that are very length lengthy, they are going to reflect current practice and technology, and then they bundle services that are frequently performed together. So no, of the, probably the most notable thing is that the SNI part of these codes, which we used to code separately, is going to be bundled now. So. The codes are just more detailed. They also include description of vessels that are involved and everything that's bundled into the procedure. So stent grafts are devices that are placed within arteries to treat aneurysm and they strengthen the vascular wall. So they're also used for pseudoaneurysm, dissection, penetrating ulcer, or traumatic disruption. And these are all um, conditions that are listed in your CPT book. So these are not used for occlusive disease, um, but they are used for those various other pathologies. There are different types of stent grafts that meet different patient needs. There's abdominal aortic stent grafts, there's the iliac stent grafts, and then we have fenestrated endovascular aneurysm repair, which is often called FIVAR, and then we also have thoracic endovascular aneurysm repair, or TVAR. So the codes we're really gonna be focusing on, or the, the stent grafts we're gonna be focusing on are the abdominal aortic stent grafts and the iliac stent grafts. Um, and like I said, this section has been renamed, so it used to be called endovascular repair of abdominal aortic aneurysm. It's now called endovascular repair of abdominal aorta and or iliac arteries. So it just reflects the vascular anatomy that's treated and it avoids limiting the type of injury just to the aneurysm. So we'll cover the procedures and the changes to the abdominal aortic stent grafts as well as the iliacs. There's no changes for the FIVAR or TVAR codes, but there is some new open exposure codes that were updated this year that impact the TVAR and FIVAR. So you'll see that as we go through. 
So aneurysms are the bulging of an artery, and what they do is they weaken the vessel and it can lead to rupture, which then can lead to hemorrhage. So there's different types of aneurysms and they are repaired using different methods. So you can kind of see as we go through, there's different devices that might be used for different types of aneurysms. Um, you might see fuse, fusiform aneurysms, um, and those commonly affect the aorta. So I have a picture of those on the slide. This right here, so fusiform refers to the shape of the aneurysm, and it just is bulging on all sides of the artery. So you can see it, it's going on all sides. And then saccular is another type of aneurysm, and that just refers again to the shape, and that means that it's on one side of the vessel. Um, an acute ruptured aneurysm is really a life-threatening condition, and you'll see when we get to the codes that CPT now differentiates between if it's ruptured or if it's not. Um, what happens is that the patient's blood pressure is gonna drop really quickly, and it's, it really is a medical and emergency. So in the documentation, you'll need to support that it was a rupture if you're gonna code rupture. Um, you might see physicians talk about like a little staining on an image, and that's really not gonna be considered an acute rupture. So basically, if you have questions on whether or not it's a rupture, it's probably not a rupture. If the patient ruptures, like I said, it's a medical emergency, and it should be obvious in the documentation. Um, abdominal aortic aneurysms are potentially life-threatening, and they used to be treated by aortic, open aortic repair, um, but since VIR has advanced so much, um, the endovascular aneurysm repair, or the EVAR, is now much less invasive, and it makes it really the treatment of stuff that used to be inoperable um, possible. So that's really cool. This is a really neat technology that they're able to do. Um, so we'll just kind of dive right in and now talk about some of the terms. Oh, sorry. There we go. Um, so some of the terms you're going to refer, you're going to see in documentation for aortic stent grafts um, are different. So an aortic stent graft is, is a tubular device that can be a single piece or it could be multiple pieces as in a modular device with one or more docking limbs. Um, but you'll see them referred to as various things. So endograft, endovascular graft, stent graft, endoprosthesis, covered stent. These are um, all the same thing. And the term that CPT chose to use is endograft. So you'll see endograft in your CPT code descriptions. And then the new codes are also going to reference that the treatment is for repair of infrarenal aorta. So that just means below the renal artery. So you can see on our picture here, this is a bifurcated stent graft. There's an abdominal aortic aneurysm, and it's below the renal arteries, which are right here. Okay. So let's just talk a little bit about how the procedure is formed, uh, performed. It's usually done under general anesthesia with a cut down approach. And the cut down um, usually needs to be bilateral and it's done on the femoral or iliac arteries. The bilateral access is needed for placement of wires and large sheaths into the aorta. So you can see in this picture, the first one is going to be the catheter placement. So in this case, it's going up through the iliac and then into the aorta. And then on the second picture, um, you can see that they unsheath the stent graft. And then the first docking limb is down here in the iliacs. And then on this picture, they're actually on the other side in the other iliac, and they are deploying the second docking limb. And then on the fourth final picture, we see the full stent graft. So it covers the aneurysm and the aorta, and then it has docking limbs in both iliac arteries. So that would be a full stent graft that's been deployed there.
So the codes um, for 2018 are divided by the type of device. So the type of um, device can be uh, varying depend on, but to, depending on the aneurysm or the pathology that's being treated or the location of it. Um, we have aorto aortic tubes, aorto uniiliac, we have aorto biiliac, ilioiliac tubes, and bifurcated iliac. So the codes will be divided on those types of devices and then based on the aneurysm status. So the status is either going to be other than rupture or acute rupture. And if it's acute rupture, it's going to include the use of a temporary balloon occlusion. So remember that these codes are for treatment of aneurysm, pseudoaneurysm, dissection, traumatic disruption, penetrating ulcers, um, or in the case of an iliac location, it could be for an arterial venous malformation. And those are specified in your CPT book, so if you need to highlight them to remember, that'd be a great idea. Um, rupture is also defined by CPT, and it is clinical and or radiological evidence of acute hemorrhage for purposes of reporting these codes. So again, it's going to be important that the documentation support if it's a, an acute rupture in order to code those acute rupture codes. Um, another important note that the CPT book describes is a chronic contained rupture um, is considered a pseudoaneurysm. So if the document states it's a chronic contained rupture, that's going to be considered a pseudoaneurysm, which will be captured with the other than rupture codes. All of the EVAR codes are going to include introduction, positioning, and deployment of that endograft. Treatment zone. So this is a new thing for 2018. Um, prior to this year, there's no definition of a treatment zone in the guidelines. In 2018, the Guidelines do include that definition, and it is really defined by the vessels that contain an endograph. So the endograph, meaning the main body and any docking limbs or extensions that are deployed during that operative session. So sometimes there are adjunctive procedures that are performed outside of the treatment zone, and as long as they're outside of the treatment zone, they can be reported separately. So that could be things like angioplasty, um, stent placement, or embolization. So just for an example, um, when an endograph terminates in the common iliac artery, so like what's shown on this picture, um, any additional treatment performed in that artery is not going to be separately reportable. But if there's tr treatment that's performed in the external or internal iliac arteries, it can be reported separately. So it's going to be really important for you to know what the treatment zone is for whatever endograph you have being deployed. Okay, this brings us to polling question number one, Kathy. Perfect. Thanks, Shay. On your screen, the question is, per CPT, is a chronic contained rupture considered a ruptured aneurysm? Is it yes, no, or you don't know? So what do you think? Per CPT, is a chronic contained rupture considered a ruptured aneurysm? Boy, you guys are fast. I just looked over and we've got, everybody has already voted. All right, Shay, I'm closing the poll, sharing the results, and we've got 75, so the majority of our audience is saying the answer is no, but we do have a small percentage who are unsure. Okay, great. Um, good job, guys. It, the answer is no. It is a pseudoaneurysm, and that's going to be coded with the other than rupture codes. So chronic contained ruptures are considered pseudoaneurysms and are coded with other than rupture codes. So that's just an important tidbit. It is in your CPT guidelines. Like if you want to highlight it, it might be a good thing if you don't think you'll remember. And this brings us right into the new codes. So starting with code 34701 and 34702. Um, that 34706 should be 34702 on your screen there. 
So go ahead and make that correction if you're following along. Two right there. Um, and these codes are for aorto aortic tube endographs. So I put in bold the words that you might want to highlight if you're following along in your book, but the, these kind of differentiate the different codes. So this is for an aorto aortic tube endograph, um, and the 34701 is for other than rupture, and then the 34702 is for rupture. So those are the differentiating um, terms that you'll see in the CPT code book. Um, and this is a type of endograph that just goes in the aorta. So the treatment zone is the infrarenal aorta. And I put the treatment zone there, you can see here. Um, and the treatment zone is really going to be important to know, like I said, because if there is any other types of treatments being done outside of the treatment zone, you'll you'll code those separately. So treatment zone is very important and it is defined in your CPT book as well. And you can see that here, this picture is just an example of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. It's treated with an aorta aortic tube graft there. Um, so there's no docking limbs on this one and this one is all one piece. And the next code is for aortic uniiliac endograft. So this is a different type of endograft. Um, and this picture actually shows a couple um, other procedures as well. Um, it has a fem fem crossover and a iliac artery occlusion device. So when an aortic uniiliac stent graft is placed, one of the iliac arteries is excluded from the graft. So you can see that here in the picture. And thus it's also excluded from blood flow. To establish the blood flow, that's what the fem fem prosthesis is for. Um, so that just redirects blood flow to the opposite leg there. So 34703, again, is going to be for your other than rupture. And then 34704 is going to be for rupture. So you can see the terms that kind of differentiate the codes, again, have been bolded if you are highlighting your book. Um, the insertion of the fem fem prosthesis is reported with 34813. And then the iliac occluding device is 34808. So that code did not change. Um, also in this procedure, you might see that an iliac conduit is created to deliver that stent graft. So we will cover that in this presentation as well. So here are the codes I just mentioned. Um, and this is that same picture you see um, kind of three different procedures here, but this is going to be that aorto uniiliac device. So that's going to be reported with the 34703, 34704 codes, depending on whether it's ruptured or not. And then the 34808 um, is for this device, which is the iliac artery occlusion device. And then finally, the fem fem prosthesis, um, which is connecting right there, um, the, that's going to be reported with 34813. So all of that can be done during the same operative session. Just an FYI, since this is a new code section that was completely rewritten, and I'll kind of point up this on the way here, but you might hit an edit when you code the um, 34808 with the 34703 or 34704, and that's because there's some missing parentheticals. So I think we'll see some revisions as um, AMA publishes um, errata and technical corrections to the CPT book this year, but just keep an eye out for that. Um, the AMA is addressing it. And then I also mentioned iliac conduit. So that's what we have here. Um, for some patients, an iliac conduit may be created to deliver the stent graft. So this could be if the patient's iliac artery is stenosed and it won't allow the passage of the deployment catheter. The iliac 
can be left in place at the end of the procedure or it can be clipped and sewn over to the common iliac artery. So the creation of the iliac conduit is reported with 34833. And this code is only for the creation of the iliac conduit and it's not for the delivery of the stent graft. So it's an add-on code. And you can see in the picture, the picture helped me understand this. Um, this is an iliac artery that's stenosed. So they're not able to get the, they wouldn't be able to get the stent graft through with the sheath in this case. So that's why they created the conduit. So that's this there. And then they're able to pass it through. So the picture really helped me understand that. All right, moving on to aorto by iliac stent graft. So, um, in 2017, we coded these by devices. So they were either uni unibody or modular bifurcated with either one or two docking limbs. Um, this has actually been simplified. Um, and all we need to know is that all of these types of devices are bifurcated devices. So all of these types of devices, and you might see the manufacturer's names, like they're listed here. These are all considered aorta by iliac endographs. So in the sense that we don't have to know whether they're unibody or modular bifurcated with one or two docking limbs, this part of the coding has gotten a little simpler. So again, all of these are considered aorta by iliac endographs. And here's your code or codes. 34705 and 34706. So the 34705 is going to be for other than rupture. 34706 is going to be for rupture. And the treatment zone is defined as infrarenal aorta and then both common iliac arteries, which makes sense because it's an aorto by iliac endograft. So they are going to be reported for bilateral iliac artery aneurysm repair as well. So we'll talk about that when we get to the iliac repairs. Okay, chimneys or snorkels. These are just regular stents that are used when a device will cover another artery in order to maintain blood flow to that artery. So they are coated with 37236 or 372. Three, seven, um, and they can be coded separately. Um, an important note is that they should not be coded using the fenestrated devices codes. So they are coded with 37236, 37237. And this example um, on this slide is stents that are acting as chimneys or snorkels into the renals there, um, where the endograft is covering the renal arteries. And they could be used in renal, visceral, or iliac arteries are probably the most common. Okay, moving on to the iliacs. Um, the next code is 34707. Um, and that is going to be for an ilio-iliac tube endograft. And it is a unilateral code. The first one, 34707, is for other than rupture. And then we have 34708, which is for rupture. The treatment zone is going to be a portion of the iliac arteries. Um, so it could be the common, the internal, the external iliac arteries that contains the endograft. So coding for iliac stent grafts depends on whether a tube graft was placed in the common iliac or if it was a bifurcated device that was used at the iliac bifurcation. So we'll go over that scenario as well. Um, next. And we really have two scenarios here. So the code assignment is based on which areas were treated. So if the infrarenal aorta is treated at the same time as both iliac arteries, then we are going to be with 34705 or 34706. And then if it's if it's an isolated repair just using 
um, iliac endografts, that's when we can use the 34707 and 34708. Now remember that 34707, 34708 is a unilateral code. So if we're talking bilateral, we'll have to apply the modifier 50 for that. Um, since the 34705 and 34706 is for an aorta by iliac device, we won't need a modifier there since um, both the bilateral iliac iliacs are covered with that code. So you can see the different devices in our picture. Um, on the top, for the aorta by iliac device, you'll see the um, aorta is covered in a stent, and then on the bottom, it's just the iliacs. And another fact here, if there was a rupture that was caused by a surgeon, um, maybe the original intent was angioplasty for occlusive disease, and then they have to do a stent graft um, to treat that open extravation, that you can still use the 34708 instead of 37221. And then the last um, the last code we see here that is actually a revised code this year is for bifurcated iliac endograft. So this is shown in the picture for the hypogastric aneurysm. So it's on the left leg in this picture. Um, and this is used to be reported with two codes. So we had 0254T and 0255T. The 0255T has been deleted and it was for the radiological SNI. So you can see that is now included in the 0254T. Um, this is for a branched endograft. So again, it's shown on the left side here for the hypogastric, hypogastric aneurysm. Um, as shown here, there's actually two codes that you would code, you would code the 34705 and then also the 0254T. So 34705 on the right side and then 0254T on the left. Um, there is an exception and we'll go over this when we cover our what's included and what's not included in these codes. But for 0254T, you'll see and I bolded this in the code select in the code description here, but it includes selective and or non-selective catheterizations. The other EVAR codes that we just covered only include the non-selective. So that's a difference in this code. All right, extensions. Um, we have an add-on code for extensions. It is 34709, and it describes placement of an extension prosthesis that's distal to the common iliac arteries or proximal to the renal arteries. So it can be con um, reported in conjunction with 34701 through 34708 when performed, um, but it is gonna be important for you to know the difference between docking limbs and extensions, and also where that extension terminates. So docking limbs in a modular device or device that's in multiple pieces, um, they're placed to complete the stent graft. The extension is gonna be placed to extend the length of the graft, um, and that doesn't completely cover the target zone. So extensions can be added to unibody and modular devices. And they're either going to be added at the proximal aortic end or um, either iliac docking limb. So Dr. Z, if you guys are familiar with Dr. Z, he gave um, a really good description. He says, if you went to the docking limb store and then went to the extension store, the products on the shelves would look identical. So to the surgeon, they might be the same. Um, for coding purposes, we have to know if it's a docking limb, which completes the graft, or if it's an extension, which is like an add-on. So most of your documentation will reference docking limbs as extensions, so you just need to be very careful here. Um, so the iliac extension here would have to go into the internal or external iliacs, and then the proximal aorta extension would have to go above the renal artery to be reported in this case. Here's some more info on coding for extensions. 
Um, and then, like I just said, notice that extensions into the common iliac are not codable, but if there's extensions into the internal or external iliac, those are going to be separately reportable. This does have an MUE of three, um, so you won't be able to report or you won't get paid for any more than three of these. Um, they are reported once per vessel, even if multiple extensions are placed in a single vessel. Um, the treatment zone angioplasty and stenting when performed is included. And then I also mentioned this, but abdominal aortic extensions terminating in the aorta below the renal arteries are included in 34701 through 34706. Now let's take a look at what's bundled. Um, so the codes 34701 through 34706 all include the same thing. So they're going to include all imaging of the aorta or the iliac arteries and its branches. That does include runoff before, during, and after placement of the endograph. So this could be initial diagnostics, 3D reconstructions, cone beam CT, leg runoff, all of that's included. It includes all fluoroscopic guidance and radiological SNI. It also includes all non-selective catheter placement. It includes extensions in the aorta from the level of the renal arteries and below. It also includes extensions in the common iliac arteries or where the treatment zone ends. And then it includes docking zones, um, or docking limbs, I'm sorry. And all angioplasty or stent placement in the endograft treatment zone. It also includes percutaneous vascular access if it's small, which is gonna be defined as less than 12 French sheath. Um, and we have some codes for if it's larger than that or if it's open, um, that will be coded separately. But if it's not, um, then it's gonna be included in that EVAR code. Separately reportable, and I've mentioned this several times, but it's really going to depend on that treatment zone. So if there's procedures performed outside of the endograft treatment zone, those can be reported separately. So that may include selective catheter placements, angioplasty, or stent placement, non-selective vessel embolization, extensions that are terminating suprarenal aorta, or in the internal, external, or common femoral arteries, and then iliac occluding device placement. We can code that separately. If they use intravascular ultrasound, that can be coded separately. And if there's a rupture, um, decompressive laparotomy can be coded separately as well. So the only exception to this is for that selective catheter placement, if you're using the 0254T, um, that does bundle with 0254T. So selective and non-selective catheter placements are included in 0254T. There's some other reporting guidelines as well. Um, you can use the rupture codes, 34702, 704, 706, or 708, if a treatment ruptures the vessel. So if it's a stenosis treatment that ruptures during the procedure and then it requires an endograft placement, you can go ahead and use those rupture codes. Um, you should not be using the EVAR codes for treatment of atherosclerotic occlusive disease of the aorta or iliac arteries. Those are going to be 37221, 37223 for iliac stenosis, and then 37236 for aortic stenosis. So um, be careful to look at your indication um, and look at why the procedure is being performed. And this brings us to pulling question number two. Kathy? Oops, guess that means me. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, I've launched the poll. So the question is, is the radiological SNI separately reportable with EVAR? 
What do you think? Yes, no, or I don't know. So we've got responses coming in. Anybody else want to weigh in? I think we're going to have some good discussion. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. And we've got, Shay, we've got 75%. So three quarters of our audience is saying no. The answer is no. But we do have a small percentage who are unsure. Okay, great. So the majority of you guys are correct. It's not separately reportable. It's going to be bundled. It it used to be separately reportable. Um, but in 2018, it is going to be bundled. So it's not separately reportable. So great job. Okay, so next we are going to talk about access procedures. So I mentioned that this procedure usually begins with a cut down. Um, and the access procedures are coded separately for EVAR because of the size of the device and the additional work to access the vessel. So sometimes it's hard to visualize how the transit catheter procedure is performed with an open approach. Um, since I think we usually think of this being done as percutaneous. Um, but the vascular size is really different depending on the individual patient and the patient's body. Um, but the average aorta is 14 to 20 millimeters in diameter, and that's about a little over half an inch to a little over three quarters of an inch. Um, so the device will be scrunched up inside a catheter for the delivery, um, but that sheath that's needed to accommodate the device is big. So that's why um, opening open access um, does get reported separately. It's additional work um, needed in order to perform this procedure. So um, there is a code for percutaneous access though, but it's only for a large sheath. So it has to be 12 French or larger, and it does include ultrasound guidance. It's unilateral, so you very well could be reporting this once for each side. Um, Ultrasound guidance is bundled with 34713, um, and it's not to be used for smaller than 12 French access procedures. So that 12, if it's percutaneous access that's done and it's smaller than 12 French access, it's going to be bundled into the EVAR codes, um, but you can report ultrasound guidance separately in those cases. Um, it can be reported with EVAR, FIVAR, or TVAR. So I mentioned that some of the access procedures affected the FIVAR and TVAR code. So this is an example of that. Um, you shouldn't report it for TAVR or TMVI. And then there also is possibly an add-on code edit error between the 34710 and 34713. So um, we will hopefully see those errors being corrected, but this is another example of where you might see an add-on code edit error because of some missing parentheticals. Um, so definitely keep track of if you're getting any denials in this section. And then we have our open access. So this is probably the most common approach, um, bilateral cut downs, either the femoral or the iliac arteries. Um, it is coded separately from that interventional procedure. Um, there is some rare instances where you'll see brachial or axillary arteries. So those are new codes as well. Um, if a conduit is needed, you'll see that reflected in the codes here. So if a conduit is needed, that's going to be a different code than if it's just open artery. So we went over that picture earlier. That would be the conduit. These codes are reported at the time of impl implant. And if it's done bilateral, um, the CPT code instructions say to report it twice um, rather than using modifier 50 because they are add-on codes. Other guidelines for open access coding if there's extensive repair, um, it can be reported separately. Um, for a bilateral procedure, report the code twice. And then if the conduit is reported to bypass graph, you should only code for the bypass. So the example is 35665 and not the conduit in those cases. Um, 
I will note that for the extensive repair, CPT um, doesn't give any instruction on coding for extensive repairs for the open approaches other than femoral. Um, so that could be an area where they're, you know, they will expand um, on if the extensive repair is allowed to be reported with the other approaches. Um, but for now, the, the CPT book only notes the femoral approach. So again, monitor that CPT errata and technical corrections document regularly. Um, this That could definitely be an area where we see some corrections. Um, we would go ahead and recommend that you do report them separately. Um, so go ahead and report that extensive repair with um, any of the other open approaches as well. Another new code we have is 34712, and that's for enhanced fixation devices. Um, this is usually done where they bring the patient back at another time to place a device to treat an endo leak. Um, and when that's done, you only have this one code, the 34712. And for 2017, this was an unlisted code. So we do have a code for this now. It's 34712. It's only reported once per session. We also have codes for delayed extension placement. So 34710 and 34711. These include all non-selective catheter placements, all associated imaging and radiological SNI. You can use the 34713 for a large sheath, the percutaneous access for a large sheath um, with the delayed extension codes. And what happens if the EVAR fails and then they go ahead and do the open repair? So like I mentioned um, at the beginning of the presentation, these always used to be repaired via the open repair. Um, but in this case, if the procedure fails, you can go ahead and use the open repair instead. These are not new codes um, and they did not change this year. And this brings us to polling question number three. Okay. So here's our last question for today's presentation. The question is, report open and percutaneous access procedures with modifier 15 for bilateral procedure. Is that a true statement, a false statement, or you're not sure? So true or false? Report open and percutaneous access procedures with modifier 50 for bilateral procedure. Oh, and Shay, we're going to have some good discussion. Anyone else want to weigh in on this one? If not, I'm going to close the poll. Three, two, one. So Shay, we've got 33%. So the minority is saying it's a true statement, but we have the majority, but just at 67% is saying it's a false statement. Okay, so the majority of you are right. It is false. The CPT instructions for the um, open and the percutaneous access procedures um, say to report the code twice, and that's because these are add-on codes. So modifier 50 is usually for bilateral procedure, but in this case, since these are add-on codes, the CPT instructions say to report it twice. All right, good job, guys. Um, we are kind of moving to the end here. So the last topic before our case study is on modifier 62. So modifier 62 is used for two surgeons and it is applicable to EVAR and iliac endograft placement codes. Um, it should be used um, when the procedure or the patient's condition requires a skill of two surgeons. So in this case, it's usually gonna be a radiologist and a surgeon. Um, the second surgeon can't be acting as an assistant surgeon. We have a separate modifier for assistant surgery. And 
it's really when the two surgeons are performing separate portions of a single procedure um, done by a single approach. So both surgeons have to build the same CPT code with, or CPT codes with modifier 62 appended. So Medicare and then many other payers as well recognize modifier 62 with only certain CPT codes. If you're ever looking at the National Physician Fee Schedule, the RVU file, there's actually a co-surge column and that's for modifier 62. So if there's a one indicator, it means you can append modifier 62, but the documentation must show which special circumstances or skills required two surgeons. If there is an indicator of two, you can apply modifier 62 as long as each of the operating surgeon is of a different specialty. Um, if there's a zero or a nine, uh, Medicare does not allow modifier 62 with that code. Um, but for the iliac or endograft and EVAR codes, modifier 62 is allowed and it's very possible you'll see that um, used, especially in the case of the cut down being performed maybe by a general surgeon and then the radiologist performing the endograft placement um, with the assistance of the surgeon as well. So to finish off today's webinar, let's take a look at a case study. And I'll give you guys a chance to read through this. The indication for this was abdominal aortic aneurysm repair and then they also had a consent and some anesthesia information that I removed um, just for sake of the length of the case study on the webinar. So I tried to highlight some of the terms I thought were important and some of the questions I was asking myself was um, what kind of access and right off the bat, we see that there was open femoral arteries and it was bilateral. And that was done by the surgeon. I also looked for what kind of device. And I saw that it was a bifurcated device. So that tells me I'm in the aorto iliac codes. I also looked for the treatment zone. So I know that it is going to be infrarenal aorta and both common iliacs. I also saw there was angioplasty done and looked um, whether that angioplasty was inside or outside the treatment zone. So in this case, the um, angioplasty was performed within the common iliac arteries bilaterally and that is going to be inside the treatment zone. And then I also looked at all of the limbs that were deployed. So those are kind of towards the bottom. We see a contralateral iliac limb um, and then a right-sided iliac limb and then followed by another um, length limb. So those are going to be all inside the treatment zone because they were all in the common iliac arteries. So this case study continues here. Um, this patient had no immediate post-procedural complications. Um, the physical status was ASA-3. The anesthesiology medications given and the impression states that it was a successful EVAR abdo abdominal aortic aneurysm repair. Um, you can see on the findings here, the patient had an abdominal aortic aneurysm. There, they indicate it has not changed significantly, so that um, tells me it it was not ruptured. There was nothing else in the documentation prior that also said it was ruptured. So um, no rupture here. Um, and they also state the, the renal arteries are patent. Um, again, that stent graft was deployed in infrarenal location. Um, the renal arteries were good. There were no leaks. Um, everything seems to be successful here. So let's take a look at the coding. 
um, remember I said there was two surgeons so in this case um, we're going to assume there was some kind of general surgeon and then a radi radiologist. The device, um, we actually had the exact device that was used, a picture of it for this case. So you can kind of see um, how this was numbered, um, goes with the app report, so the order of the limbs that were deployed. Um, they did do an open femoral artery cut down for the approach. Um, so that was done by the surgeon. So that code was 34812, and we're gonna report it twice for a bilateral. And then that's just for the surgeon. And then for the endograft, we have the aorto iliac endograft. And again, it was a non-rupture. So 34705 um, with the 62 modifier for both the surgeon and for the radiologist. And that really brings us to the end of this webinar. So hopefully that case study helped um, illustrate how to use these codes and, and demonstrated what we went over today. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Perfect. Thanks, Shay, for a wonderful presentation. And yes, we had a couple questions come in. So the first one is, if one physician does the cut down, and another physician does the EVAR procedure, how is modifier 62 used? Okay, that's a good question. I'm just going to go back to our case study um, for a second. This question has actually been asked to Dr. Zia as well, so we were able to reference his materials too, um, but it makes sense when you think about it. The modifier 62 is going to be added to the base procedure for most, for the for both doctors. So like in this case, um, which actually matches kind of the example you just gave, we had the surgeon that did the cut down and then we had the surgeon and the radiologist doing the um, stent graft. So the base code in this example is 34705. Um, so that's for both doctors and then for the surgeon who did the cut down he's going to get the add-on code the 34812 um, twice because it was bilateral so the vascular surgeon um, he adds the cut down code to the base procedure which is the endograft um, and the radiologist will not assign the cut down code perfect thanks Shay and we had another question come through. If the percutaneous access is used for the EVAR procedure, but it's smaller than 12 French sheath, can you bill U.S. guidance? Yes, and I think U.S. guidance, you're referencing ultrasound guidance. So I'll just go back because it is on one of these slides, and I want to make sure you guys have this for future reference. So I'll point it out here. Um, if the percutaneous access is smaller than um, 12 French sheath, so that's here, it's going to be bundled with your EVAR code, but the ultrasound guidance then is not. So you can build ultrasound guidance if it's for 12, smaller than 12 French sheath access. You just won't have an additional code for the actual access procedure. Great, thanks Shay. Hey, and we had one more question come through. If we receive denials based on edits that seem incorrect, what should we do? That's a really good question. Um, and unfortunately, I won't be surprised if it happens. Um, so here's the issue. A few years ago, CMS told CPT they would build NCCI edits around parenthetical notes and instructional notes. So CMS created NCCAI edits based on what's written in the CPT book. Um, so for example, and one of the examples we talked about was that the CPT book says you can code the extensive repair with open femoral exposure codes, but doesn't mention the others. Um, so what we would say is that to hang on to any of the denials throughout the calendar year in hopes that you can rebuild them, and then keep monitoring that CPT errata and technical corrections document um, because the edits are 
going to, you know, evolve and be fixed um, as CMS and CPT align those parenthetical and NCCI edits. Perfect. Thanks so much, Shay. And I think that is all the questions we had come in. So again, I want to thank Shay for a wonderful presentation, and I want to thank everybody who joined us for today. Just a reminder, you were able to download the handouts from the materials tab, but we will also put them in the follow-up email as well, so you will also get that. So look for the follow-up email within 48 hours with the recording link and the CEU and then we ask you to take a couple minutes when we when you close out of the webinar today to fill out a survey. So again thank you very much and please check our website out for upcoming webinars and we hope to see you either next week for our webinar or next month. So thank you very much. Have a great afternoon everyone. Bye-bye.